Rivers. And if you find you're tuning into a wave, well then I don't know much about the NSA. Hello everybody. Hello friends. Welcome into another episode of Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. I'm Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. And here we are, episode 61. 61. And what is the topic? This is Prophecies of Nostradamus. Good one. I love Nostradamus, so this is a cool topic for me. Yeah, I'm excited. I know we've mentioned him before, but uh, yeah, I'm excited. Me too. Cool. Well, before we jump into episode 61, anything about last week? Yes, uh, I have a couple of things that I received that I wanted to share with our listeners. Cool. Um, This one came from, uh, she's a a friend of a friend, and she friend requested me on Facebook a little while back, and I accepted, and and then uh, I want to say a couple months later, she sent me this, and so I wanted to read it. Cool. It says, hi, we are friends, and I am not sure we actually really know each other, but I look forward to that happening one day. We became friends because I know Rich through my husband, but I wanted to let you know I find you inspiring and you make me laugh. (laughs) I enjoy your Facebook post and enjoy interacting with you. That being said, I'm writing this message because I relate to your related to your post with the job change and wanted wanting something more fulfilling of the soul. The same thing is happening to me at the moment, kind of not by choice. And being in limbo is the hardest part for me. How are you going about finding your way? Hmm, That's cool. Yeah. Um, I wanted to read that because I feel like right now. A lot of people feel like this. A lot of people feel in limbo. Life is stagnant and they don't really know where to go from here. And I I wanted our listeners to know that they're not alone with this. Nope. That I really feel like this time is a big time of change. And this is kind of like a mass awakening. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of the, the universe's way of shaking us all and going, wake up. And if there's something about your life that you don't like, now is the time to change it for everybody that's listening. I I, it, it is a time of major, major change. <clears throat> so I, I wanted everybody to know that and to re- be able to relate to that if you can so you know you're not alone. Good. I'm hearing it a lot lately. Yeah, it's, so. I know that's great, great advice and yeah. great wisdom. I, I agree with it 100%. <clears throat> well, thank you. I thought I would share my feelings on that. Yeah, and that was really nice of that person. I mean, it's yeah. I didn't ask if I could read it, so I'll just keep it the name I, confidential. Totally, I understand. But, yeah. but I know the person. I mean, yeah. I know of the person, so I know you don't really know them that well. Yeah, we just kind of recently became friends with them through somebody else. Well, and you had mentioned that you saw a Facebook post that she made <clears throat> about not getting the job that she just applied for. So I wanted to tell her on the show that there is something coming. I feel it for you. There is something coming. That Probably one, something better for you. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. That job that you that you didn't get, it was not meant to be. And the one that you will get will be more fulfilling, which is what you're looking for. Right. You need something to go up, not not down. That's what I'm feeling. I'm that. pretty sure that's what the post was, is she didn't get the one that she was hoping for. Yeah. Or shooting for. Yeah. There will be a better one. Yeah. For sure. So. Cool. Uh, and then I wanted to read one other thing. Um so that I could explain a little bit, I do a lot of pet, lost pet readings, and yep. they're they're a lot of work, and people don't really understand how they work. So I thought this this is a response to an animal that was found that I thought would be nice to share. Good. Um, this is from Cindy. I worked with Cindy on her lost cat. Um, Cindy says, Patches is home. Thank you, thank you. A lady found him in an area not far from what I think you were seeing. On the drive to pick him up, I saw a lot of the things you mentioned. The tire swing outside the large white house, a fork in the road, and the white goat you were seeing was actually a statue of a white goat. I am amazed at what you saw. It made no sense when you told me about it, but on the drive to get him, it all clicked. I still can't believe how far away he was. I never thought cats could get that far that quick. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart, Cindy. Wow. I, I wanted cool. to talk about this for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, if you have a lost pet, know they can travel very far. People always think, oh, they must be right around. You right. know what? I have found cats that have been like 30 minute drives away. There's wow. been animals that have been found in different states because you just never know. Somebody right. might pick that dog or cat up and then, True. you know, take them somewhere else. And then and, they run away from there or something or yeah. wander from there. So I I really feel like that's one of the reasons why a lot of lost pets 
continued to go missing because, um, you know, they don't like outstretch the area. Right. And that's usually for me, I can usually get somewhat of a distance, but finding location is very, very, very difficult, especially with a moving animal. Right. Like this cat, this cat was constantly on the move. So the things that I was seeing, the white goat, which is funny, that's a statue, uh, the but tire you still swing. saw a white goat. I know. But it was it? a statue yeah. of a white goat. It's so funny. <laughs> but these are things that the cat saw <laughs> along the way. Um, how long ago? I don't know. They give me what they give me. I'm hoping that it's recent what they've seen. Right. But because they're still moving around and stuff, it's hard to say, oh, your cat's right here, right here. I see things and then I look on maps to see where they are. Right. But this lady... It was kind of cool the way it developed because somebody found the cat and then she saw my stuff. She wasn't like out looking or, you know, she was able to kind of pay more attention and saw these things on the way to pick up the cat, yeah. which is a trip. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's so, really cool. Yeah. So that that's kind of a little bit more as to how that works. You know, going to an animal communicator to find an exact location is probably not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of things that we can tell you. And, and Cindy and I talked back and forth a little bit. And I said, you know, again, with the location. And she said, you know what? It doesn't matter where he was found. It's the fact that you knew he was alive. You knew that he was okay. And you kept me calm. Right. That's really what most of these people need to know is, are they okay? Right. You know, are they safe? Are they yeah. inside? Are they hungry? Are they thirsty? Sure. What are the, you, those are a lot of the things that, that people really want to know right. when their animals are lost and things that I can answer for them. Cool. So A success story. Uh, yes, I love them. Yeah. I do. I love those. Nice. Yeah. Well, thanks, Cindy, for sharing that. Yes. Thank you so much. Awesome. Well, is that all you got for last week? That's what I got. Very nice. Well, then episode 61. 61. Prophecies of Nostradamus. Nostradamus is a very, very interesting man. Yes. And he's very misunderstood. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot, of, I read a lot. I have, we've watched a lot of things on Nostradamus. Um, and I have yep. a lot of information here and a lot of screenshots. So if I get flustered at some point, if I can't find something, <laughs> bear with me because it's here somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah, there's been a lot of research done on this topic because it's so confusing. It is. Yeah. Because nobody really like knew the real Nostradamus and knew what he was trying to do. And so they speculate on the type of person that he was and why he wrote the things that he did. Right. Before we go into this any further, I, I do want to tell you that one of the things that I've seen um, with like Dolores Cannon, we're going to talk about her, mm-hmm. that Nostradamus really, really wants us to know is that he was not writing these. What are, what are they called? I always mess this up. Quatrains. Yeah, quatrains. Um, he wasn't writing these to scare us. No. He was writing these to warn us so that we could change the future, so that these things that he saw happening wouldn't happen. So no going into this that he wasn't what a lot of people take him to be of this doomsday predictor. Right. He was trying to stop it. Yes. So. And when, when we say he was trying to tell us that we could change this... Um, you know, many, many people go, well, what am I going to do to change mm-hmm. Hitler? Right. What am I going to do to change, you know, uh, the Twin Tower you know, right. attacks? I mean, well, he was a big believer in the subconscious and mm-hmm. the power of the mind. And he would essentially say, we need to come together in groups and focus our conscious energy Mm -hmm. on these supposed events and we alone can keep them from happening. Yes. So, and I'll give you one example that I read or was watching a Dolores live at a convention. And she said uh, that the Pope's assassination was one of his, one of his predictions or Mm -hmm. prophecies. Right. And then a lady stood up, but she had said that hasn't occurred. The assassination of a pope hasn't occurred yet. Right. Um, And then a lady stood up in the audience and said, well, this is a possibility because there was an attempt on John Paul. I don't know which one it was, I think. And he was shot, but he survived. Mm -hmm. So she said that that prayer amongst the Catholic 
community and maybe even the world for that matter, people that liked him or knew him, kept him, our will kept him from dying. Yeah. Wow. So that's a pretty incredible point, which, yeah. which I love. What I loved about it was that Dolores remained open minded mm-hmm. and teachable. Yes. At that very moment in front of a room, in front of her peers or actually even followers, people that really um, were true believers in what she was doing, she showed no sense of ego or pride or Mm. I'm right, you're wrong. Right. She was actually impressed with the lady's, I think, level of thought process about how would you get to this conclusion? Right. Yeah. I was like. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I love Dolores. Yeah. She's yeah. awesome. We'll talk about her yeah. way more in this because, <clears throat> I, you know, the way that this topic came to me actually is is very weird. Um, I started thinking about things that were going on in our world and predictions that I've made about things were gonna, that were going to happen. And so I decided to Google to see if other psychics had said the same kinds of things. Mm-hmm. And as I was reading through a lot of what these other psychics were saying, they started talking about Nostradamus and how he predicted a lot of these things. So that's where I kind of got the idea from about doing Nostradamus, um, because there are so many things that he has predicted um, in the past. Oh, yeah. But what we're going to focus on mostly is what's yet to come, because that's really what he focused with Dolores on. Mm. We'll talk a little bit about past predictions, but, right. you know, yeah, I think that that's important so that you see if if and when these things start happening, mm-hmm. that this is what he meant, because he was very confusing. Let me give you a little bit of background, yeah, first of all. That. For people that aren't familiar with Nostradamus, uh, he was born Michael de Nostradam. And it was, was Michel. Oh, I'm sorry. It was Michel. Yes. Michel de Nostradam. I thought I missed a letter. <laughs> uh, born in France on December 14th, 1506, and he died at the age of 62. Uh, he predicted his own death. The day before he died, when he was uh, leaving, he told his secretary that she would not find him alive the next day. And when she got there the next day, she found him dead on the floor. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see. He was a French astrologer, author, physician, and seer. Some people call him a prophet, but he didn't like that because he's not a prophet. That's uh, that He's a seer, but these are called prophecies, so they're like, predictions, you know, yeah. fortune telling, those types of things, but it's two different <clears throat> meanings really. Right. So he didn't like that that phrase. Um he's best known for his book The Prophecies. Mm-hmm. Something I found interesting in the research is that he didn't call it The Prophecies of Nostradamus. He called it The Prophecies by Nostradamus. Yes, Be- and there is a reason. Yes. Um, I think that went back to the the fear of being discovered that these were his. Um, Well, and I think what he was saying was, is I am not, um, he did say this, I am not claiming to be something holy. Right. I am not Christ. Yeah. I have, uh, and, you know, we'll get into like that part later, but that basically I am a channel. Yeah for the messages which he did say are from god Uh but i am not a messiah or anything no i just deliver i'm just sharing the message Mm -hmm. so these are simply by me right exactly they're they're not they're not mine i'm just writing them down uh his uh, he wrote in quatrains we had talked about that and quatrains are let's see i wrote it down here for their four line four lines Yes, four line poems that rhyme. Mm-hmm. So this is very important in thinking about Nostradamus. They and... don't necessarily rhyme. Yes, they do. Do they all yeah. rhyme? Yeah, that's what it said. Let's see. I wrote it down. Ugh. And this is where I knew I was going to get myself in trouble. But it's here somewhere when I find it. Oh, okay. It does I didn't rhyme. Know they did. And the reason that I found that so interesting is because he did write in different languages. He wrote in Latin and French and was it Greek? I can't remember what else he wrote in. But there were a few different languages, and he intermixed them. Yeah, I know so, there was three or four. Yeah, so he had to rhyme these different things. But that was all a part yeah. of how he put these together. Mm-hmm. He also wrote in anagrams. And what an anagram is, is just rearranging letters in a word, okay, or words. So, for example, listen, if you switch the, the letters around, would be silent. 
but it means the same thing. Oh, okay. um, astronomer, moon starer. A gentleman, elegant man. These are all examples. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, so see how if you really take things like super literal, yeah. it doesn't really work with right. his his writings. So, right. so he put a lot into these to make sure that Mostly that they weren't discovered to be his, right. is what I feel and what I believe we've... Yes, I don't think he... Uh, it's not... My understanding is during this time that necessarily people that worked in the psychic realm weren't um, martyred or... But depending on what they were saying. Right. So if he's like... If he's... If he's saying like kings and queens and predicting that these people are going to be killed and and certain yeah, things did. like that, I think that yeah, that's an issue for them. So he definitely did not want necessarily because it wasn't so much that he didn't want them to know it was him because he was writing books, right? Well, and yeah, publishing books. He was one of and today still is one of the most. Um, his books have never, never been out been of out. published. Yeah. So never. I don't want to say he's the top selling author, yeah, but we don't know. he's he's one of the longest lasting published authors. Yeah. So he definitely wanted these messages out. Yes. He just wanted to be careful because the Spanish Inquisition was happening at this time and it would be very easy to just give them a reason to Right. That was that was yeah. the thing is that they would look for any little thing to, you know. Uh, but he did, he still, well, he, first of all, he wrote almanacs, which at that <clears> time was very popular. And that's for, mostly for farmers to kind of predict like the weather and mm. patterns and things like that. So he became known for that. And then he started writing, uh, I believe his first book had come out and it was uh, Queen Catherine Medici, I believe is her name. She called upon him because of a prediction in this book or a prophecy, mm. I call it. And what that said was that her husband, Henry II, would, well, what came to happen is he was killed in a duel. But the way that the it was written was, it didn't, you couldn't tell. She could just tell that it was about her husband mm. and wanted to know what it was about. So she summons him to talk about it. And within that process, she asked him to do um, astrology charts for her children and then she made him the counselor and physician to the court. Mm -hmm. So he spent a lot of time with her. Yeah. Um, he also he also had students um, before this. He taught in secret. Mm -hmm. He would teach. They called it like the occult. And yeah. so he couldn't be like affiliated with the right. occult part of it. He studied medicine. He wasn't yeah. um, didn't actually have a degree because he left school, I believe. Yeah, that he was the first time the school was closed <laughs> because he lived through a plague. Uh, and right. the school was closed because of the plague. And then the second time he was kicked out, I think I have it here somewhere, because of something that he said that came off as a cultish, I believe. Right. And so at that point, instead of staying in school, he left and started traveling. Right. And I believe that's when he met his first wife, the one that, that she died from the right. plague. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned that yet. But because he traveled and studied medicine, he did... Uh, partake in um, natural things mm -hmm. that, and I'll refer to as probably like mushrooms, uh, mm -hmm. mescaline, or things of probably that nature. Yeah. Um, that helped him kind of meditate. Yeah, he was an apothecary, yeah. so he had the, exactly. the knowledge, the compounding knowledge. Exactly, mm -hmm. that's the word I was looking for. Mm -hmm. um, the, the interesting part about the coding and using three or four different languages in the coding is not interesting, not hard to believe, I should say, is that now the translations get to be a bit more <clears throat> differentiating yeah. between one translation to another. Mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact, I think uh, one of the things we watched, they said the English translations are probably the worst. Yeah. <laughs> so We take it so literal. You but, know? Yeah, because he's using these combinations, trying to rhyme, trying to be coded. Yeah. Um, it's making the translation very difficult. So if we then bring Dolores into this equation, there's now a whole nother yes. element to this. Yes. Um, and... I don't even know if you're ready to yeah, go. Yeah, we can to that get part. in there. Yeah, sure. Um, is 
that she's using the process of past life regressions. So meaning she's putting somebody under hypnosis to find out whether they have a past life and to journey through that. She happens to stumble in one of these regressions with a, a patient that this patient stumbles on a life that they are an apprentice of Nostradamus. They work uh, or mentor. He mentors them. He's educating this person. Yes. Um, 15th century or 17th? Yes, 15th. 15th century. Um, so she's having more than one, uh, multiple sessions with this, this patient, putting them under, and each time is connecting to this person, and she's asking them questions about Nostradamus and all the things they're doing. And then at one point, the patient, while under, says, Nostradamus is here and actually wants to speak to you. And she said this is where her world, as far as her profession, the door flew wide open. Yeah, this changed her life. This changed her life. Yeah. Because, first of all, what he was and what she was able to establish with him, and he was very clear in telling her that is, I want you to know, um, I am not dead. You're yeah, not speaking this, to this the dead. Part. I'm not on the other side. I am living. In the 15th century, you are speaking to me in real time. Okay? They developed a plan and a way, and he even gave her special questions to ask that every time he connected to her, she connected to him, Dolores, to him, that she would know she was indeed talking to Nostradamus. She then, this person that she initially started these sessions with got so freaked out about it. Yeah. They moved away to Alaska. Alaska. Mm -hmm. And she thought, oh my gosh, all my research and work with Nostradamus is dead in the water. And he said, don't worry. Uh, the person was talking about leaving and finally did, but she had asked under one of the sessions, if this person leaves, everything's done. He goes, don't worry. Now that we've established this, I will be able to connect to you through anybody that you have sessions with. Yeah. She wrote, I think, five books. About him? Yeah. Three. Three books. Okay. But she had to add to them. Yeah. Or add to the she last did. one, amend them or mm -hmm. something like that. Because uh, she had more research that came. She may so, have done more after what I saw in the videos. There were only three, but she was talking about combining right. them into one to right. make it easier. So essentially what he's telling her at this point is I that all of my predictions are being poorly misunderstood. Okay, how does he know that? Right. He's in the past writing the predictions. How does he know the future? Right. The way the future is handling his books and his predictions? Well, because the same reason he told her, I need you to understand, you're not talking to me as a ghost. I'm living. Right. This essentially now brings up the topic of simultaneous time. Yes. That there is no time. We've invented time to measure when the sun goes up and the sun goes down. Yeah. But essentially everything's happening all at once. Yeah. And a continual thing. So he's able to tap into this resource similar to like what you can do. Mm -hmm. um, but I think he was so much greater he could see beyond. And yeah. part of that is what he was using. To help him. Yes. Um, but this isn't uncommon for a lot of uh, worldly known people that have delved into, you know, this mm -hmm. type of uh, realm. Right. Yeah, for so. sure. Um, so you said something that I wanted to point out. You said that the the lady that went moved to Alaska, mm -hmm. that she stumbled upon this lady or this, this situation and she went in and found she, Nostradamus. Yeah, you know. she said the lady didn't even believe that she had past lives, but she wanted to go under to see just if she really did. So here's here's my point. A lot of things in our life happen without us understanding why they're happening. You might get that little tap on your shoulder to go somewhere. All of a sudden, just think, I should just look into something like this. Always do it. Because that's the universe's way of pulling you in mm -hmm. that direction. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened with this lady was that she had that little kind of tap on her shoulder. Oh, you should talk to Dolores, you know, let her see if you have a past life. And that led this to begin. And 
it couldn't have been, well, he had a lot of students, so it could have been other people, but imagine the pool of people that there actually was to choose from. Oh, yeah. Do you see what I mean? So this was absolutely arranged by the universe for this to happen. The, the, oh, yeah. When you said stumbled upon, I was like, it was definitely looked like it was stumbled upon, right. but it, it was not at I all. I think for her, because Dolores herself is not psychic or at all. Right. She claims to just be a reporter. Yes. And she just rewrites and reports what she gets out of these sessions. So, yeah, I don't think she saw that at first. Yeah. Maybe she probably became enlightened through this process. But yeah. I definitely think that uh, she didn't she didn't know this was meant to be until maybe some, a little bit after when yes. when he finally said, I need you to s- to sit here with me and go through every one of these mm-hmm. prophecies. And they did. And I'm going to tell you what they mean and when they're going to happen. Yep. And I want you to tell the people that they can keep this from happening if we choose to. Yes. That was the biggest message from right. him. He had almost a thousand quatrains that they had to wow. go through each and every one of them. And one of the things um, that we don't really think about is not just a language barrier, but a barrier of like, even though this is simultaneous time, he doesn't really know what certain things are here. And we don't really know what certain things are there. So as far as like astrology goes, mm-hmm. um, Dolores was not big she didn't know anything really about astrology so when he would tell her things she's like i don't really know what that means so nostradamus asked her to bring in um somebody to help her an astrologer okay this is where this story gets really cool Mm -hmm. I, i enjoyed this one so all of a sudden this guy comes i don't even remember where she met him um but he's like i don't know why i'm here I'm just, I'm here for something. I'm just, I was told to come here, you know, yeah. something. So then they start talking and she finds out that he's an astrologer. Um, so they start working together. His name was John. And John actually was able, so she would put John underneath hypnosis too. Mm-hmm. Um, not just to help with the astrology part of it, but she put him under. And then he could not just only connect to Nostradamus for her, mm-hmm. but he could actually... Um, What do they call that? When you leave your body and go to the other location? Astro plane. Uh, Yeah. He could do that and go and work with Nostradamus. He could see. Nostradamus could lay maps out for him and he could see that. This whole thing was such a trip. Incredible. Gets better. So while she's doing this past life regression on him, he goes back to his life before this one. Yeah. And it turns out that he was... uh, a psychic in Germany during World War II and that he actually worked for Hitler. This is something I didn't know about Hitler. Um, wow. You can do research on it, though, because Dolores did, and she found that it is true. He worked with psychics. He wanted to know what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. But not only did he want to know what was going to happen, he wanted the Nostradamus prophecies that he knew were about him mm-hmm. to be interpreted to say that it was Germany winning, that Germany was going to win. Right. Um, he actually, they, they did this and they gave out pamphlets on it and things. So there is lots of proof that this actually happened. Well, this guy, John, in his life that he was a psychic for Nostradam- uh, for uh, Hitler, he refused to do what Hitler wanted him to. And so he was killed. He was wow. shot. So then his next life, he comes back and he becomes an interpreter for Nostradamus. <laughs> Isn't that a trip? So we we know these things have to happen for a reason. You know what? And I could see the other side saying, hey, if it's for the good of man and to wrong, right that wrong, excuse yeah. me, then yeah, we'll allow it. Well, look at it. Like, he didn't want to work under Hitler and translate them the wrong way. In his soul, he knew that. Mm-hmm. So he left that life. His right. life was cut short. Right. If he would have stayed in that life, he prob- and Hitler would have died, he probably would have been able to translate them then. But because he didn't, he was given another chance to come back and do that in a way that nobody else has been able to. Yeah. Him and Dolores, the work that they've done, the work that she's done with a lot of people, yeah. but this story in particular got me because of how intertwined it is. Yeah. Then... Not long. They're not even done with their research yet, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, they're still doing research, and she's asking him questions, and he he says, you know what? I got to move away. I got just – there's things going on. I got to move. So he moves to Florida. 
Well, she's still communicating with John what, after he moves to Florida, asking him about specific dates, like trying to get him to still do his astrology stuff. And he says, you know what? It doesn't matter because I'm dying. And he tells her that he's dying from AIDS. Wow. Um, and he would see. I think I wrote down he was 35 years old. Wow. Yeah. So he essentially came back to this life, I feel, to do this work. And when it was done, he was able to go. Yeah, I agree. You know, was that a great way to go? No, yeah. it wasn't. But it also opened up another one of Nostradamus's prophecies, and that is about AIDS, mm-hmm. and that it was created in a laboratory. Yes. Uh, let's see. I wrote this down. Um, so the the prophecies about AIDS uh, said that it was it was a germ warfare. That went too far. It was a mutated form of rabies. They didn't expect it to get out the way that it did, right. and it it became too much. And no government would take responsibility at that point. Of course not. I mean, you know, I'm. Uh, it depends. You know, wh- where what government, what continent? Well, who really knows? I mean, people go, "Oh, it came from Africa." Well, do you really know that? Nobody really knows that. No, we don't. So, but. There is something that I, I'm a believer in, and that's the cabal, and that is a government that oversees the government. Yeah. And they're connected both, you know, politically but globally. Mm-hmm. So, um, and these are families that go way, way, way back. Yeah. That are families that have tremendous amounts of money. Yes. Oh, Absolutely. Uh, so she finished up book two with John before he died. And then she did uh, book three, mm-hmm. which she was able to do with 12 other people that she put under hypnosis. And she not only did this research with them, but she tested them time after time after time, asked them questions to make sure that what she was getting was actually right, that it was Nostradamus every single time. If you haven't seen Dolores... This is like grandma telling you that something is real. Yeah. Because that's what she is. She's Mm -hmm. the sweetest little old lady. I just love her. And she gets so excited about her own work that she already knows about. Mm -hmm. You know, while she's talking about it, she's like, isn't that exciting? I got 40 years doing it and she still like smiles. Yeah. It's like this innocence of a child. Yes. Yeah. It's very, very pure, very sweet. You can feel the wonder. Right. That's I, we got to do another episode on Dolores um, because there's a lot that's happened in her life that that can show you that bad things do happen, but also that there's usually a reason and that there's help for us when bad things do happen. Yes. Um, so we'll have to do a whole other episode. Yeah. Uh, on her, but like there's things. Um, let's see. Okay, so then in this third book, this is the one I want to read. This is the one where they get into the dates and they actually really, you know, work it down. Now, I have found that their dates may be a little bit off Mm -hmm. because there were some things that they say were supposed to happen in the 90s and 2000s that I really feel are just now kind of happening. Right. Um, Let's see. So Nostradamus, like I said at the beginning of the episode, he was very, very clear about the fact that he did not want people to think that this was about um, predicting the future, that it was mm. just about the doomsday, that he wanted to change things. He right. wanted people to understand that these things that are going on, like you said, like the Pope, can be changed with our own minds. Mm-hmm. And that's why he used Dolores. Dolores mm-hmm. was his channel. Yes, because so, she could interpret it in a modern day, yes. in a modern language, and it's true interpretation. Yes. Um. So Nostradamus told her to write these books and then to travel and share what she had learned and try and spread uh, that we need to change these things. And that's exactly what she did. So Mm -hmm. when you talk about the Pope, this was a prediction that they had translated already. Mm -hmm. It's probably one of the things that she taught that we could change. Yeah, that's why that lady stood up and said that. And I was like, wow, that that is totally like I just felt like that's correct. Right. All of his his predictions, his prophecies were worst case scenario. They are. And let's one other thing that's point out mm-hmm. is that he says very clearly all these prophecies can be changed by human will, by the consciousness of the world. Yeah. He also says none of these prophecies 
whether he's talking about a third world war or something devastating, none of these prophecies bring forth the end of the world. Right. He says he can see the end of the world, but it is so far out, so far out, and that there is no humans on this planet when that happens. Yes. We are, have left this planet by then. The reason he'll, he says simply, it's science. The end of the world is because our sun becomes a supernova. Exactly. It starts to get so big that it engulfs all the planets within its solar system. It's yeah. proven. There's this belief in us, for whatever reason, that right. the Earth's just going to explode one day. Oh, there's so many bad things going on. Poof. No. Right. The, or that the wars will break out and you right. know, we'll just bomb each other to the death. But, yeah. I mean, are we going to have wars? Probably. probably. But there's not going to be like a mass assassination of people. Like mm. we're not all going to die at the same time. Our people will probably slowly start to become extinct mm -hmm. over time, but not in our lifetime. Right. It's going to take a long time for that to happen. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things that he predicted that were translated, like I said, I haven't read the third book. I want to do that. But these are things that in the videos that we watched and in the research uh, that Dolores did confirm that they translated accurately. Uh, one of them was the 2000 election between Bush and Gore. Yep. If you remember, this is where there we found out, well, we knew, finally, right. that there Don't was... Don't dimple the Chad. Remember that? <laughs> I, no, but that's funny. <laughs> Make sure you pop the Chad per correctly. <laughs> oh, yeah, the next time, huh? It was a little bit. Um, so that, in his, his prophecies, was called the hung jury election, and there was no winner of that election. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe what happened was Gore, uh, what do they call it? Conceded. Where he conceded. Yeah. That was not supposed to happen. No. And that's what Dolores was saying. She said, Gore was supposed to win. Mm -hmm. If Gore would have won, it would have changed things because he would have dealt with our, um, our economy and the ecology and things like September 11th might not even have happened. He was very much about the environment. Yes. Gore. He still is. He still is, yeah. So the world probably would have been in a physical different shape. Right. Exactly. Not us, per se. Right. The planet. Yeah. But it starts with the planet, people. We live on it. That's exactly right. Yep. Uh, he predicted Monica Lewinsky scandal. Mm hmm he predicted the 9-11. Let's see. I have that whole thing on my <clears throat> phone here. One of the things that he did say, and, and I didn't find it, but she said particularly is a bomb will fall on the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. And that, do you remember this in the video? It said the night before she was telling somebody about this or right. something. Um, but yeah, let's see if I can. But find again, that. we're talking about interpretation, right? So yeah. if we go back to maybe some past ones real quick to show this is that. He predicts um, <clears throat> the assassination of Kennedys. Yes. Both, both the Kennedy brothers. Yes. I have some other ones. By the here. means of Thunderbolt. Okay. Well, neither one of them were struck down by lightning. No. This is an interpretation or a coding to explain, I'm guessing, a gunshot. Yeah. Um, and then he makes a present day prediction with that same right terminology yes and see here's the thing about that now knowing about the anagrams is i don't know what that word was that he used for it originally but if they translated that word into thunderbolt they probably shouldn't have done that they probably needed to just rearrange the letters and because they didn't do that they kind of got a different meaning is what what i'm getting but here's a few things that he did predict that uh in the past this one we talked about briefly was the death of Henry II. Uh, the young lion mm -hmm. will overcome the older one. On the field of combat, a single battle, he will pierce his eye through a golden cage. Two wounds made one. Then he dies a cruel death. Well, that's exactly how he did die because he was jousting and he took the, whatever you call that, yeah. jousting thing to the eye. Right. Uh, and then died from the infection, like. I think they said almost two. Yeah, later. 10 days later yeah. or something. So he did. He died a cruel, horrible death because yeah. they didn't have medication and stuff to help that at no. that time. Um, Napoleon. Okay, so one thing about Nostradamus, we'll get into more, is um, the predictions of the Antichrists. Yeah. I say Christ, Antichrist because there's three of them. Right. 
but I'll tell you first that he didn't like that term. He used that term because that's what everybody else used. It wasn't right. translated that way, but when he worked with Dolores, he said, I don't like that term because this is not about religion, right. which it's really not. Um, so he predicted uh, three Antichrists. The first one, we believe, is Napoleon. He said, Pau ne Loran, more fire than blood, swimming in, fra- in praise, the great man hurries to the confluence. He will refuse entry to the magpies. Pampon and Durance will confine them. Okay, so these first three things, Pont de Laron, reference three towns in Paris, although the last is actually named Oleron. By using them, Nostradamus employed one of his favorite devices, the anagram. Rearranging the city's letters spells Napoleon Roy, mm-hmm. which eerily resembles Napoleon, the king of France. More of fire than blood may refer to the non-noble lineage of Napoleon who took power during a coup. Refuse entry to the magpies could refer to Popes Pius the Sixth and Seventh, both of whom Napoleon imprisoned. Hmm. So see how it like breaks down and you really have to look at it. You can't yeah. just be, you know. Um, very clever. Yeah, very, very clever. Very clever. Uh, He also predicted uh, Pasteur, Louis Pasteur. Mm -hmm. Uh, The lost thing is discovered, hidden for many centuries. Pasteur, named him specifically, Mm -hmm. will be celebrated um, almost as a godlike figure. This is when the moon completes her great cycle, but by other rumors, he shall be dishonored. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. Yep. So it's... Yeah, the, but these are ones in the past, and that's why he tells us, great, we've decoded those, but they're in the past. Let's work on the future so that we can change the future. Yeah. Yeah, but you can see how, how some of these things kind of work. He also said that the the terminology about the Antichrist was because of the Bible, and we're talking about Spanish Inquisition at the time. That's a phrase and a term they use in the Revelations. Yes. He's trying to... Give us a better insight into that text as well, I think. Yes. As far as our perception of what we think that text is saying to us as to maybe a more current right. translation exactly. of what what to expect. Right. Not necessarily angels and demons, literally in the physical sense, right. coming out of the sky and fighting. Right. You know, when scorpions, I mean, you look yeah, giant it's scorpions. It's ridiculous. And you think about that and you go, well, a tank could very well resemble a giant scorpion sure. for a man that's never seen a tank before and he's trying to describe it. He doesn't know what it's called. And if you take that word and you rearrange the letters, you could get something else. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you see those hieroglyphics in those, you know, temples yeah. in Egypt and the one that was plastered over and then fell in an earthquake and they've got a tank and an helicopter yep. and a boat and an airplane. And a flying saucer, I think. Yeah. So he's trying to give a more current, even still it's hard to translate, but more current translation right. of what we're talking about here. So I think it's more a, a battle of evil and good. Yes. I, oh, I absolutely It's not agree. necessarily something we can see, but we can feel the energy coming off of what it is, who it's coming from. Absolutely. That's, you know, we've been kind of trained to think as the Antichrist and the apocalypse or whatever you want to call it as being this doomsday end of the world. But in a way it is because it's going to be the end of the bullshit. Sorry to say it that way. But this, once this is done, this, what she talks about with the Antichrist, once that's done, we go into a time of peace. So it really is the end of something. Mm -hmm. A peace. Yeah. So it really is the end. It's just, looked at really differently right you know his his stuff was really confusing obviously but one thing that people say about him that they find as a discredit which i don't think that is that a lot of his things could mean multiple things they Mm -hmm. could signify different events it doesn't necessarily mean Mm -hmm. what we're translating it as is what he meant it for uh for example this is the one about september 11th 
the sky will burn at 45 degrees. And that's where New York is on the map. The map, right. Uh, fire approaches the great new city. By fire, he will destroy their city. A cold and cruel heart, blood will pour mercy to none. So you can interpret that probably a lot of different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, there was another one that we read, too. I, I couldn't find it to screenshot it. Um, but it talks about um, the two big rocks. It refers to two big rocks being taken down with fire. Uh, and th- so that one, too, could refer to September 11th. Mm-hmm. We know he did predict September 11th because um, it was predicted by Dolores in a, in a way, I believe. I haven't read her book yet, mm-hmm. but they did interpret that as something like that happening, I believe. Right. So that was, you know, one that was interpreted later. But right. there are several that could mean that. So it can get really, really confusing with these, you know? Yeah. Um, One that I found interesting... That, well, let's back up a little bit. Let's talk about the anti- the other two Antichrist first, because I think that's important to get into this. Right. Um, so they believe Hitler was the second Antichrist. Mm-hmm. And there are predictions about Hitler in um, what, what Nostradamus had said. Uh, he refers to him. Well, let's see. What did I do with it? It's probably around here somewhere. Hister. Hister. Yeah. Uh, but it is about him and it is about what happens and that he is the second Antichrist. Mm-hmm. So now we're faced with the third Antichrist. Who could that be? When could that happen? Well, if they're doing the dates right, it would have already happened and it didn't. So one of two things could happen. We could have sidetracked that altogether mm-hmm. by people thinking positively that it didn't happen. Right. Or the dates could be a little bit off. Um, I tend to believe that the dates were off, and I'll I'll read you why. I'm going to just tell you some things that he says about the it was, third Antichrist. Besides the date, it was the origin of the person. So, too. yeah, they, there was something that could have been translated as that he came from Egypt, but that's not it. it and I'll read that one. Um, it doesn't say that the Antichrist came from Egypt. It says something about somebody coming from Egypt, after, but I'll read it. But let me tell you some of these other facts first. Um, So the third Antichrist, uh, Nostradamus said, is the worst of all. He will learn by watching Hitler. He will be defeated by the common ordinary people, which is great. There Mm -hmm. doesn't have to be some big, gigantic blowout war. He will be able to be defeated by our our minds, our peace, our coming together. Um, Let's see. Uh, In the Bible, in Revelations, they talk about this 666. Um, They don't really get into that, if I remember correctly, about how we would know if this Antichrist has that 666. I've been thinking deeply on this since then and trying to figure it out, and I I think I'm working on it. Well, one thing she did point at the... She talks about at the end of that last video is... And a couple people in the audience get up and kind of confirm it. Is that the World Wide Web, WWW, and all these different languages and mathematical equations comes back to 666 yes yeah so there's it's numerology there's something about the numbers and and i i've been trying to kind of figure it out maybe she talks about it in the third book i don't know yeah Uh, she does yeah so not really sure too much yet about that but uh, let me kind of say this when we think about the antichrist and one of the reasons that nostradamus hated that word is because it is religious Mm -hmm. so let's look at it a different way christ was for humanity He took care of his people. He loved his people. He wanted the best for them. He died for them. The Antichrist will do the exact opposite. He will not care about anybody but himself. He will not take care of his people. He will just will be all about him and his family and what the power. But charming. The number. Yes. Charming, you know, at least to begin with. Very charming. Handsome. It's a handsome man with charisma. Yeah. Uh, like the type that you're kind of attracted to and you don't know why. Well, because that's what they do. They they pull you in. Even Hitler had followers. Oh, yeah. You know. So um, and then it said that he will appear at first to have all the answers and then things will they will go south from there. Right. Um, so there if we look at the the dates that they're talking about, they talk about. <sighs> The late 90s, early 2000s. Well, mm-hmm. this obviously didn't happen. Uh, Dolores had a sketch done of the person that Nostradamus is describing. 
So they believe from this sketch and from the things that they know that they they can narrow it down that he's from the Middle East and that he was, I believe he would have been born in the 50s or something like that. Well, here we are, 2020, and that doesn't apply to anybody. Right. However, and I'm, I'm going to go there, I have to. Yeah. If we look at all of the things going on in our world right now, we can see that it's very possible that the Antichrist is living right now. Yeah. And and not in the Middle East. Well, and, when she connect with the with him, he said he's born already. Yes. Um, so I'm going to read a few things. So that was in the, what the 80s, 90s. That was in the, that was in the 80s. Yeah. <clears throat> but he had said he had been born a while ago. Okay. Yes. Um, so I'm going to read a couple of things that I actually read this one a couple of weeks ago to you and it didn't hit me until today what I actually think it's about. Okay. Um, it says when the litters are overturned by the whirlwind and faces are covered by cloaks, the new Republic will be troubled by its people at this time. The reds and the whites will rule wrongly. Mm hmm. Again, I haven't read Dolores' third book, so I don't know how they translate this. I do know it is in the classification of the Antichrist. When I read this, to me, it, okay, it says, when the litters are overturned by the whirlwind and faces are covered by cloaks. The litters are overturned could mean the riots. It really could. Mm -hmm. And actually, one of the people that did tear this apart and... They said that it was about riots after Trump's inauguration. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that that's it. I think this is the riots for right now. Yeah. And then it says, and the faces are covered by cloaks. So we're talking about riots when your faces are covered by cloaks. Mm -hmm. The New Republic will be troubled, which some people might take New Republic as China or something like that, maybe. Uh, I don't think that's what it means at all. I think uh, it means more of a new uh, uprising, a new movement. Yes, yes, exactly. The new republic will be troubled by its people. At this time, the reds and the whites will rule wrongly. Well, the Republicans' colors are red and white. Yep. Let me tell you, I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I don't care about politics in that way. What right. I care is the type of person that you are, how you treat people, how you talk to people. Right. Um, our current president fits this. He fits it. Yeah, there's so much about that. I mean, the cloaks, too. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Everybody's yeah. walking around with a cloak around their face or a face mask, if you want it. Right. Um, there are several things that he wrote that talk about trumpets, mm -hmm. um, which they believe could possibly be Trump. Yep. Um, and then let me read you this one. <clears throat> A child without hands, never so great a thunderbolt scene. The royal child wounded at a game of tennis. At the well, lightning strikes, joining together three, tr three trussed up in the middle under the oaks. Is this the actual, what, is this the quatrain? Uh-huh. This is the one about the lightning. These, these aren't rhyming. No, well, of course not, because they're not in their, his languages. Oh, he rhymed them oh, in his I languages. Get it, I get it. Because I'm like, why aren't these rhyming? Right, because I want to like feel a beat. Too. No, there's no beat. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's just pull this apart a little bit. <clears throat> a child without hands. Now yes. we know that Trump is very sensitive about the size of his hands. Yes, he's very self conscious. About yes. That. Um, never so great a thunderbolt scene. The royal child wounded at a game of tennis. Um, there are very many psychics out there that do predict that Trump is going to be assassinated. This very well yeah. could m mean what that is because he doesn't... He uses the same phrase when it comes to the Kennedys about a thunderbolt. Yes, exactly. Struck down by a thunderbolt. And it talks about a game of tennis. Well, he doesn't play tennis, but I, I mean, maybe he does. I don't know. It's a, it's a rich person sport, if right. you ask me. He could be a spectator. He could be a spectator, but he also does play golf. And so that could have been translated wrong. Mm -hmm. um, Nostradamus could have just made it something about a sport with uh, holding like a metal rod or something and them thinking it's tennis. Oh. It could be golf. Right. Um, I, there's so many different things that this could be. But because I'm trying to find the other ones that I have that says um, the trumpet. I have so yeah, many screenshots here. I don't think golf was here. invented until later. Yeah, I don't think so either. Um, so, yeah, he wouldn't have known what that was. Okay. Right. The trumpet shakes with great discord, an agreement broken, lifting the face to heaven. The bloody mouth will swim with blood. 
the face anointed with milk and honey lies on the ground. Okay. Well, Trump's very, very orange and white. Mm -hmm. Honey is yellow and his skin was white, really. Mm -hmm. Um, It talks specifically about the trumpet. He gets very agitated and angry Mm -hmm. and he does, he gets shaky. You can see it. So that could be that. An agreement broken. Um, This could be a lot of things. Like one of the things that they talked about um, is working with China and, and, or Russia, you know, things that he was supposed to have agreements there possibly with Russia and agreements broken or whatever, you know? I think it has more, you know what, honestly, I feel like is because he was a businessman first Mm -hmm. that he's going to be run out by the people Mm -hmm. and agreements will be broken. And so his reputation overall is going to be greatly affected post presidency right. on his business affairs. Right. So all these agreements are going to go sour, and he's basically going to be right a laughing stock. From what I understand, all of these ones that I'm reading you are believed to be about the Antichrist and about the future, which is why they all make a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, the false trumpet concealing madness, will cause. Byzantium to change its laws. Byzantium is um, Constantinople, is that another name for it? Okay. Um, from Egypt, there will go forth a man who wants the edict withdrawn, changing money and standards. So that's where they think that, you know, the from Egypt. But this isn't necessarily saying that the, um, the Antichrist came from Egypt. No. It's just saying from Egypt, there will go forth a man who wants the edict withdrawn. That could be somebody else. Again, we're just kind of picking but these apart. But didn't the you know? com- crypto coin concept come from Egypt? Somebody yeah, I think from so. Egypt. Mm-hmm. A Bitcoin, those types or Bitcoin of things. Or Bitcoin or something probably. like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's exactly right. So he probably predicted that there too. But there's so many different um, quatrains that bring up these specific things that... Sure, they could be tied to anything. A lot of these sites, they want to tie them to the last election, but there wasn't any bloodshed in the last election, and these quatrains are very graphic. And that's why he tries to tell us these things ahead of time yeah. so that we can stop them so that they won't be like that. Right. You know, but as humans, we have a hard time listening, especially to things that we don't understand. Yeah, I kind of, I wonder if the if the antichrist applies to that yeah you know like can that rising up of this movement you know right. of the red and the whites uh that he refers to can that can they will it enough to avoid you know any potential assassination right. on trump right exactly exactly yeah. Again, we don't know that that's what he's talking about. Right. Um, we don't know that Trump is the third Antichrist. Right. It's just, for me, doing this research, it kind of all clicked. And to be quite honest, the sketch, mm-hmm. it has the same features, the same nose, the it same really eyes, the same, the same, nose, same mouth, same the same mouth. forehead. It, it's a younger version, but even yeah. the hair on some level, it's like, hmm, wow. Yeah. yeah, it's... but. Remember, like, don't let that scare you. <laughs> don't think that he's going to come out of the White House with a pitchfork or something. That's no. not how this is going to work. This is to bring peace. Yeah. We're changing our world now, which is what right. Nostradamus was trying to tell us to do. Change yes. your world. Re- rebel against these people that are trying to hurt you, right. that are trying to bring bad to you, which is what we're doing. And mm-hmm. once good, us, and evil, the government, fights this out, it'll be a time of peace. Yeah, there will be the thousand years of peace, and we'll get into that in another episode. Yeah. But then comes the great genius. Yes, that we'll brings to do another episode. <laughs> huge levels of advancement right. and greatness. So, you know. see the, the the what we call apocalypse. It's not scary. It's just a change, and we will do an episode about that because that's like moving into the fifth dimension. From the third dimension, we'll do an episode about that as well, explaining more about yes, how I think this is going to work. Yeah, that can be, in my opinion, almost directly correlated to revelations. It, absolutely. Is moving into this new dimension, mm-hmm. this sort of rebirth of the earth and its inhabitants. Yeah. Um, and not talking about just continentally, I'm talking globally. Right. You know, and 
the way we're treating each other and and helping each other and and there's you know a lot of things that Nostradamus talks about as far as <clears throat> the how that occurs okay not just um the changes in people but the geological changes yes. of the world okay so we the earth sits on an axis right a slight axis well part of this moving into this fifth dimension or revelations the rebirth of the earth uh is the shifting of the earth's axis where it's actually going to tilt even more that in essence now creates huge displacements for water yeah um and this will have a lot of and that causes disruption on the tectonic plates the pressure so you've got earthquakes right it's happening volcanoes, already. You know, the the the, the ring of fire yeah. becomes active again. It is happening. Yeah, it's all happening. It's all happening. Is this like a overnight where it tilts? No, I think it's happening, like Samantha said. So it's a gradual process. Mm-hmm. This is part of the global warming, you guys. Yes. It's not so much. It has a lot to do with what we're doing to this planet. Yeah. And we're speeding that process up. But it's the tilting of the polar cap that's now getting facing the sun even more yeah so that's going to melt but he also gets into talking about hurricanes yep and a lot of the earthquakes that we're having it will come to light that these are actually scientific these are used we still have earthquakes because we can and hurricanes because we can see that especially on other planets knowing that planets like jupiter have what's the word i'm looking weather patterns yeah that are continuous and things that happen. So, <clears throat> excuse me. But he's saying that this is created, um, in essence, uh, abused. Anything that's created out of science is, is usually for the better of man until it gets in the hands of uh-huh. governments. Yep. Then they want to use it as warfare. Mm-hmm. So they want to learn how to create storms over places to wipe them out. Yeah. And you'll start seeing earthquakes like we are happening in areas that they never happened before. Right. That's because you have underground testing, nuclear that's, underground yes, testing that's good. now activating fault lines and shaking things up. Yeah. You got these weather patterns that are being created. It's crazy. And this is all stuff that Nostradamus talks about. Yeah. And that we can change. It doesn't we have can. to be this way. So, yeah. I mean, it's 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 not a doomsday prophecies meaning you know nothing is going to be done you guys are all screwed it's a wake up people and yep. get a hold of your higher consciousness and get connected to god because he through you will be able to stop that exactly but you actually have to want it you do if we want to see pandemonium and you know fighting and killing and we'll see it forever yeah if we want it but we don't no and we're going to get to that point we are. We are. We're getting there. But it takes everybody to want it. It does. Not everybody. I'll take that back. It takes a good percentage. Yeah. But of a global percentage, if it's only 1%, which is what she sa- states. Yep. We can do it. It's not that much. It's not that That's much. That's a lot of people out of 7 billion people, but it's not that much. Nope. And we're here to help. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it just goes on and on. Yeah, with it and I. Oh yeah, we could sit and talk about this topic. I've been intrigued. I've been intrigued days. with him since I was very, you know, young, probably teenagers. Uh, and I will say that when Trump first came in, because of the things I had read about Nostradamus and kind of seeing some of the the similar behavioral kind of things that he taps in on about yeah. this supposed, you know, third Antichrist. I see some similarities. He was a charmer. I mean, even at first, like, I I don't choose who I vote based on Democratic Party. I choose on what I feel from that person. And that election was very, very difficult. It was like the lesser of two evils. But at first, I really felt that, like what they're talking about, that he could do this. He's He's got good ideas. He's got good plans. But then you start to see it falling apart because he doesn't know how to talk to people right. and he has no, has no empathy. empathy. No, right. exactly. 
So he's like stone cold. And again, and I'm not putting him down. I know there's people that aren't going to like this. Right. It's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. I'm just being honest. You can't deny any of what I'm saying. No, and, and I can't even sit there and hear these quatrains and these prophecies from, you know, Nostradamus and think, well, why would anybody want to kill Trump? Yeah, right. You know, yeah, there's some pretty upset people in this, this country right now. And right. now that I... Now that this whole Black Lives Matter thing has come to finally come to surface as it should, now we're seeing other countries. Yeah. So, yeah, I would tend to think that there's people all over the world that don't like this. There's probably more people in other parts of the world that don't like him more than people here. Yeah. Because of the threat that he opposes. Oh, yeah. That he poses, excuse me. um, And his hot headedness. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, look at that. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, I knew. We went I've, five minutes over. Shame on you. Oh, yeah. Shame on me. <laughs> and I still, like, I have all this stuff. This whole page we didn't even talk about. Oh, no. I knew I was going to have too much information, but it, the fact is, is there's so much to really grasp this right. concept. And then uh, Dolores Cannon just adds a whole other twist to it. So She is. And it's not like, you know... She, Obviously, I, she couldn't be the go-to in everything we talk about, but she's written some really astounding books on a lot of things that intrigue us, I yeah. think, um, and that are really hard to ignore yep. for me. I agree. So sure. I love it. Well, yeah. maybe we could even do next week as a part two and talk about, you know, yeah, the fifth dimension. Yes. And the move and after I would love to these, talk about that. you know, and you could squeeze a little bit there in the beginning of that last part. But sounds like a good plan to me. Well, I guess it all depends on the listeners and how much you like this one. <laughs> yeah, I like this one. I did, too. Yeah. Cool. So. Well, that was Great. good. Thank you. Thank you. It's a lot. It's so much. This was a lot of research. You know, yeah, it really is. But mm-hmm. yeah, you did put some work in. I can well, see we both that. did. Yeah. We watched a lot of videos and so. Yeah. Some of the books I've read, she talks a little bit about them, but I haven't read the one because yeah. um, the, the, the four one. volumes or whatever, three yeah. volumes, excuse me. Yeah, they don't have them on Audible, so that's why I didn't either. Or I would have listened to it already. I just don't have time to sit there and read a book all day. Yeah, I don't. I yeah. do it Audible when I'm yeah. working on something, exactly. painting something, you know. But so come on, Audible. Yeah, get with the yeah. program. We Give need us it. more canon. More do canon. it. <laughs> All right. Well, before we say goodbye, you want to share your page? Sure. My website is Samantha Jones Psychic Medium dot com. You can find it all right there. Quick and easy. Beautiful. And you, sir? Uh, D Jones Art Collection dot com for my artwork and uh, at D Jones Art Collection for Instagram and Facebook. Gypsy Brown dot com for the music at Gypsy Brown. Music for Instagram at Gypsy Brown Band for Facebook, and uh, coming along, we almost have the first song Yay. in the Sounds can. We've got a couple more, so um, yeah, be listening for it. I would give it a roughly about a two to three month uh, timeline, and the first song we will be having out, yeah, and redesign the whole website. The website's really not up to date no. so please don't judge it or the three songs that are no. on there now no because what's coming is uh, we're working a on world it. of difference yep so we'll get there. anyways that's all i got great cool well thanks everybody for listening in hope you enjoyed it i hope you did i did and we hope you have a great week and until next week peace and love